Hello, hello! Welcome in. We are doing a practice cast here of the VCS. This is the first series of the year for the VCS. This is between Team Secret and Viking Esports. Decided to quickly record myself doing a pra practice cast here of this one. And as you can see, we're already pretty thick in to the pick and bans as ooh, Viking Esports. 380 carry bans. Lucian, Ash, and Callista, which... Leaves open uh, quite a number of really strong picks. Well, they got the Zyra Khan. That still leaves open. We already see Nocturne Nico. Incredibly powerful duo in the mid-jungle duo. But I'm looking at the ADCs. Varus especially. Something that we have seen really dominate throughout so many other regions. Something that has been one of those go-to picks. Even seeing Senna let through by uh, both teams at the moment. And that is something I know a lot of teams and a lot of regions have been playing as well on 14-1. But... We're getting the Varus pick here. Getting Varus, you have the Nocturne Nico. Really good team comp already built up here by Team Secret. Well, the Zyra Khan, strong duo in the bot lane normally. It just feels like in the current meta, that isn't really the strategy we tend to see. In fact, we're seeing a lot more of the double range in the bot lane. Like Renata Glask is still doing very well in most uh, compositions. Even seeing that Melio has been something really dominating. Especially when paired up with something like Lucian. Despite the fact Lucian is banned here, I would have still expected that to have been picked up. But Viking Esports, they have their own game plan going into this one. Getting themselves that Zyra Khan, then grabbing Cassante. I do like Cassante, just in general. Like Cassante, think he's a really good pick in general. Really strong, and doesn't really have too many bad matchups. Well, one of the bad matchups being Gwen, as that has been banned. I do, again, like this. Both teams. Having good reads on the meta, the only ones that I'm really looking at standouts are that Zyra Khan here for, team, uh, for Viking Esports. I'm really curious to see how they're going to utilize that, especially into this poke that's com coming in from Varus. Could be the on-hit Varus build. We have kind of seen Varus go between a few different builds. Be that either the on-hit build with Lethal Tempo to start off with, or you can go for the Arcane Comment slash Summon Airy with the poke lethality. That'll be... Something that we will see as we get further into the game. At the moment, we are seeing that top lane focus has been there for Viking. Making it a little bit easier for Kratos on this Cassante. Oh, the other side, Vi, something that has been doing really well in the meta. A Xin Zhao is something that I also would have expected to kind of be up there at the wheelhouse. Something that would have been really strong, but very interesting. This draft here from Viking Esports... Really just screams 2023 to me. Doesn't quite read as a meta that we're seeing right now on 14.1 in 2024. And so seeing that Jarvan, usually the Jarvan comes through when there's a lot of jungle focus. Yes, Poppy has been banned away. Same with Vi and Poppy being something that can flex between top and mid lane pretty well. But I'm still surprised to see that it's the Jarvan picked up here, especially when you have such strong picks that... You could have gone for that Zen Zhao that I was kind of talking about. But on the other side, Team Sacred, this really does feel like a meta of the current era of 14-1. Varus and Renata Glask, I was talking about that before. Nico and Nocturne, even if that's a holdover from 2023, it's still doing really strong. Especially with the experimental Hexplate build that you rush here on Nocturne. Well, that Jax top lane for Hosmed is going to be really good. I, I actually really like this draft from Team Secret. I think through and through, this is a draft that is going to be incredibly powerful, especially you look at the other side here for Viking Esports. Syndra, the final pick here for Kati. And Kati, a player that we have seen many a times on the international stage, having played before with the Gigabyte Marines, even making all the way to Worlds in MSI last year with the team. Getting that Syndra here. I... The Syndra's all, all right. I don't mind the Syndra too much. But I am going to kind of hold my, my praise on it for now. Just because, again, Nico and Nocturne. Really good at attacking, uh, especially lanes that don't have much mobility. And Syndra is going to be just that, even with Scatter the Weak. You can only stop really Nico. The Nocturne's still going to get on you because he's always going to have that spell shield. So you got to be on point with removing that. If you are Kati, Team Secret, they have a lot going their way in this game. I really feel that they have a great read of the current meta here on 14-1. Well, to me, Viking Esports just feels like they're a little bit behind on the times. But then again, I 
you can say that. You can say a team has a good read on the meta. A team looks like they're going to do really well on paper, right? And then you get into the game, and it depends on how practiced you are on said meta. Especially because we have seen that the preseason for Season 14, having released a little bit late, you know, on the live servers, even if there were ways to play it on Tournament Realms, to play it behind the scenes, play it on PvE for some of these players, not everyone is going to have that same level of practice. So as we dive onto the Rift, it is game number one, year of the VCS 2024, Team Secret will take on Viking Esports for game one of a best of three to kick off the new season. Excited to see how these two teams will stack against one another. VCS, the reason why I love to watch the VCS is this is a region that loves to fight. There's a reason why I love the LPL and I like to watch games of the LPL, do practice casts of them as well, having gotten to uh, cast the LPL in the past. It is such a fun region to watch because they're willing to skirmish. They're willing to go for these fights. Same with VCS. VCS, a region that is not afraid of skirmishing, not afraid of going for those solo bolos, the 2v2s, the mid-jungles constantly roaming around at level 3, level 4. So when I look at this game and look at how they're matching up right now, Chung is getting a little bit of poke, trying to get that information on a Kratos. We'll spot him out right there. Even having Aris kind of helping out with going for that invade. Not really going to be stopped here. Guri and Kati can't really fight against them. A Nocturne, Nico. It's really difficult, especially a Jax, too. They had to fall back. They had to play that one passively. And even looking at Chung and how that clear was. I really like that. Really getting the delay on the respawn for those chickens as long as possible. We'll make it to that Guri, even if it's you know, only a few seconds, right? It's one of those plays that l it really will build up as time goes on because Guri is going to have to be on point on getting the, the spawn on those chickens because they are going to be delayed, even if it's like about five seconds from what Guri would expect. That's still five seconds of control that Chiang could then get over Guri and get over Viking Esports. Ooh, but good scatter of the week there from Kati. Would expect that from a player who has been to multiple international events. And a good amount of damage here onto Aris. I'm hoping I'm saying these names right, by the way. If I am saying them incorrectly, please correct me. Hosmed, I know, changed their name recently uh, to Hosmed. So just let me know. Not going to get the uh, Bramble. Uh, the tank. Uh, what is it? The Tingle Barbs there in the mid lane. I right, was so just going to instead kind of try to poke out at Kati the best possible. But that is one thing that Kati will at least have. It's not quite like how Syndra once was where she was that lane dominant. Like, no matter what, it was always con control the lane, always control how things would go. Oh, actually, that was a real Aris. I, <laughs> I really thought that that was actually not Aris there. And that was the clone for a second. Got baited by Nico. But Kati was not fooled. Kati knew. It's awesome. Getting a lot of damage here on Gori. Taking away one of the Krugs as well. And Kratos can do nothing. He's got no mana. Only now getting a little bit of that back. But how do you stop a Jax this early on? There's a reason why Jax has been one of the strongest top laners. And when I saw those bands, the Gwen was banned. Yes, I like that ban. But the Gnar was unnecessary in my opinion. I think that should have been Jax. And Hosmed was like, okay, you know what? You don't want to ban that. Maybe Jax isn't going to be the strongest, the single best in Cassante. Uh, but he's damn good. And you're already seeing that. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage on him in that top lane. Took a lot of damage himself only because he went and <laughs> hit uh, Kratos underneath the turret. But he's got those biscuits. He'll be fine. Even get a little bit of a skirmish back in the top lane. No uh, mana there for Kratos. Try to get the shield. He's got to be careful missing that Intover Strike. Means no pullback. No little tornadoes getting that one, but he needed that first one. And that's why Kratos has to play so passively there. Understanding that Husband got the control of this lane. Having to forfeit that completely. And one of the things that Cassante does have that is nice, usually into this matchup into Jax is good base damage. That's most tanks. They're going to have really high base damage. 
uh, make it so that their early lane phase is a little bit easier as they scale up better in to the late game when it comes to tankiness, but not damage. So the fact that Hazman's getting this kind of control over Kratos will really start to make me worry, especially once we get to level 6. Tunnel layer's already been completed there by Hazman. Not even TPing back. He's getting a full cheater recall off. He just went for the recall, gets back. Great. And they get a few retribution chicken right there, but all the while, Chiang is on those grubbies. Get the grubs, get the tubs, as I know a lot of casters like to say. And so early three grubs here for Team Secret. Obviously, it's only the one, and Guri will get the dragon and trade for that since bot lane had been able to get a bit of a shove, get a bit of control, and allow themselves to then rotate up for this dragon. But it... Honestly, yeah, it, it, it's a pretty good trade, actually. I take it back. I was about to say, I'm not sure how I feel about this for Viking Esports, but actually, I don't mind it. It is delayed. It has taken quite some time. But the fact that Chang just goes mid lane and is putting a lot of pressure here onto Conti, getting the fear, they're looking for the flash in with the Pop Blossom. Guri, though, there to defend. Flag and drag away. Taki gets the flash out of Conti. But everyone will survive. Lots of summoners blown. Mostly, mostly those flashes in the mid lane for both sides. As Taki will cha uh, chase away Kyrie, even getting the handshake into the wall. Wait, what? Guri just died? Jong? Hello? He didn't even have paranoia. He just solo killed him underneath the turret. Okay. Uh, I want to know what happened there. That's why. That, that one's. Had Jiang been level 6, I would have understood. Okay, we go top lane. That's all out. Good counter-strike. But the all out's there for greater. He's getting the flash away from Hazmed. Going for his own dive in, but he has the ghost, not the flash. Hazmed baiting in Kratos. No one with that all out gone. Less likely. And because Hazmed had, gotten, uh, Hazmed had gotten that cheater recall off. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, he didn't back underneath the turret. Oh, he was just being greedy. Okay. It was just greed. Flash for flash. Didn't even have time to flag and drag out of there. Greed there from Guri. I was wondering what happened there. But that is a problem. Jung on Nocturne. Having that kill. That extra bit of gold. A lot of things. A lot of pro Well, a lot of things. The main thing that pros say about Nocturne and why he's so threatening is that uh, experimental hexplate. Getting that so early on Nocturne allows them so many alts is absolutely ridiculous. You're pretty much playing, if you're on the red side here for Viking Esports, the team that's opposite Nocturne, you're pretty much playing a hide-and-seek in the dark, right? You're just constantly, the lights are going to be flipped off. I, I can make a, what is it, the SpongeBob reference, the that hash-slinging slasher, because the lights are going to be flickering on and off the whole time. And that's just how much you can get. And look at this, a two-level lead? Almost a three-level lead. Chiang over Guri. Actually, no, it's, it's two high and two levels. Because he's going to be eight, and then it's going to be six for Guri not too shortly after. That is not looking good, though, for Viking Esports. Not against an Octor, not this early. Especially after he's already gotten the three grubbies earlier. But mid lane, Aris, was in danger. But Taki shows up, and they got that damage with the fear. But the Cataclysm making sure that Xiong cannot chase this down onto Kati. Bailout not helping out. Kati surviving the turnaround onto Taki. Getting the knockup, and then the Scatter of the Week flag and drag combo. They wombo comboed you to death, Taki. Two kills for Viking. Nice plays there out of Viking Esports. Great turnaround. And that is one of the problems there. For Chiang, because Aris couldn't show up with you. You need to, for that combination to work, right? The Nico Nocturne only works when you're both there. This perfect read out of Kati, he counted those minions. He knew that Matt Nico is there, and uh, Kairi, right in time. And because Chiang went in solo, even with the fear, not enough damage, locked into the Cataclysm. Taki's trying so much, was like, I, I, I can do only so much. And that was, I believe, a flash in two from Taki to get within range of that bailout, which means no flash away. Two kills on the side of Viking. Now allows them to control this top side of the map, which means it's not going to be the six grubbies here for Team Secret. Viking 
great bounce back in this game. The fact that they got that kill on Akati as well, I think is going to be pivotal. Making sure the Cinder is kind of set up will really help them out here as they get into this mid game. Well, Akati is flanked on th two sides here. Zhang, Taki, Chain of Corruption's landing from Eddie. Getting that poke too with the piercing arrow. Scatter of the week. Spell shielded to make sure that there was no retribution. Good read there. Team secret. Answering back a bit on the map. That was an easy read. They saw that the grubbies were taken. They knew that dive was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Green's Conti, another, another death on the... Well, not another death for Conti, but another death from the mid-jungle duo. Well, it slows down the Syndra only minorly, right? Because when you look at Syndra, you're trying to get those Syndra bucks now. It's not like how she was before, where it was really about bullying the lane, get to the mid-game... And then delete someone. Now you need to get those Syndra bucks. You need to get the stacks earlier on. Ooh, how's med? Good stun with the counter strike. Trying to deny Guri out of there, but flag a drag. How do you stop that if you're Jax? You don't. That is the answer. Even if you body block it, you don't. Ooh. What is that one? The... Why am I forgetting the name of that one? Not Cosmic Gradients, is it? Can't remember the name of that new item for Kratos here. Good tanky item, though. It's the Magic Resist, uh... Or is it Hollow Radiance? I think it's Hollow Radiance. The one that's the Magic Resist, uh... Sunfire Cape. It's kind of weird, actually. Wait, really? That's the one he went for? Hold on. I'm a little surprised by that. Magic. Yes, I'm looking this up. This is also a trick, by the way. Normally, when a caster has someone that, uh, is a, you know, a co-caster here... If they forget something, they actually have the they have the uh, co-caster uh, fill for them while they look up the item. And so that way, they don't seem very dumb like I'm seeming right now. I type that in. Boop. Let's see. No, okay, but we'll get back onto this and see what's happening here in this game. Continue to uh, go through everything. Yeah, it is Hollow Radiance. I was right. Whew! Big brain. Once in a while, this thing works. Once in a blue moon. Which just means that there's a moon happening twice, a full moon happening twice in a month, by the way. If you ever want to know that, if you ever want to seem smart with your friends, that is what it is. A blue moon just means that it is a full moon that happens twice in a single month. Anyways. Where were we? Chiang has gotten that experimental hex plate. Big power spike here for Nocturne. So I'll look towards this mid lane. Really look towards playing around the Nico Nocturne combo. In fact, that is exactly where Chiang is. Unfortunately, there's more just to back up ours who is getting poked out pretty low there. It's, gi it's giving Guri a lot of time to get back on this map to kind of catch up all over the place. Even will take away the Gromp. Completely unanswered and. Since the Grubbies had been answered as well, there's not much to play around for a little bit of time. We will have the uh, Rift Herald spawning here in about 30 seconds. But not really a big loss for Viking. In fact, this does a lot to kind of uh, bridge the gap that they could have suffered when it came to the split pushing as well as this mid game. That could have really gotten dire for them. So once you have Nico Nocturne moving around the map as a duo, as a, a mini goon squad... You're not really going to stop them for some time. You need to scale up. Shogun needs items. Kati needs items and stacks. Kratos wants items to uh, be able to contend against the burst of damage that will come in from Ars and Chiang. So now that they have gotten themselves where they don't have to worry about, especially a Jax with six stacks of Void Grubs, which would spawn two of the Mites and pretty much make the game unplayable. A Jax with that, you're just never stopping. He will literally 1v9. I've seen it. I've done it. It's really easy. And so the fact they don't have to worry about that is going to be nice. But it's kind of interesting to see Hasmed go for the Titanic Hydra tech here on Jax. Been seeing a little bit more of the Triforce, but we got to talk about this. As Guri, wait a minute. I thought he was going to survive. I thought he was going to get out of there. That's why I didn't even comment on that at first. I was expecting that Guri flagged and drags out of there. He had Flash. 
but no dice. So with Gurry gone, that is a free Rift Herald here. Fu Chang grabs the eye. I wonder if you want to set that up for Hosman in the spot lane. If you want to set up the Jax consistently, use that as a way to constantly attack the map and force the hands here of what I see as much more of a team fighting squad here. You look at Viking, and that is one of the powers that you have when you have this kind of draft. Great engage tools. Rakan, Jarvan, and uh, Kasante. All really good at diving into the back line. You have immobility there in Eddie. Even Taki with Hostile Takeover is going to be nice. But once that is gone, as Renata, unless you get the bailout on Eddie in time, you're kind of useless. You're, you're just a sitting duck. You have, you ha you're the robot from Rick and Morty. What is my purpose? You press R and then you press W on Eddie or Xiong. That's it. So you make sure one of them is going to survive long enough for the fight. But like I was, oh, I was saying, but that's why I like what Viking has. They have a really good team fight setup. And so that is why I would like to see Team Secret instead of building themselves up to play around that. To utilize some of their power that they do have as well in team fights. That they have with Taki's Hostile Takeover. Even if I was saying that that is one of your few functions and... Without that, you're pretty much useless as Taki. It's still very powerful as well. And then you add in a Pop Blossom from Aris. These are great tools, but Jax is going to be nearly unstoppable in the side lane, especially if you get early gold for this Jax. That's why I want to see them play around that, but instead, they are getting forced a little bit by, there by Viking. Forced to have all five members group up, and look at Kyrie on the other side. Hazmed went in with the Counter-Strike, was able to get a little bit of damage onto Gori, but all the while... Carried this Rakan getting chased away by Ars. Actually, what's he even spotted out? I don't think so. I think that the Rakan is completely unnoticed here in the back line. And Hosmed has gone back. Now the pings are coming out, but the charge was already there. Finally, with Kyrie getting spotted out, pulled back in with a hand check, Hosmed has moved up. Making sure this Rakan has no window of escape. No way. No, no! Go get him! Oh, well, look at Hosmed. He was trying to chase it as Kratos. Was back in a spot where he was in full vision. Good scout of the week, though, from Katsi. Somehow, Kyrie. How did you make it out of there? You had no right to live there. They spotted you out. They knew the angle was there. Yet he escapes with his life. But the price will be this dragon. There is a price, after all. And had Kyrie gotten out of there and there is nothing taken here from Team Secret, I would have been disappointed. But at least they get the dragon. Second one of the game. Well, about a little bit, especially with uh, the cloud dragon. That movement speed is actually going to be really nice for them. Making sure that this Nico and Nocturne are moving around the map even more so. There we go. Getting some water there. We're getting some item spikes across the board now. Blade of the Rune King there for Eddie. I saw the lethal tempo earlier. I knew that was going to be the on-hit build here for Eddie. Like I said, there's kind of been a, a debate what, what uh, builds are really go for. I, I get the on-hit here. Kisante, Jarvin, they're going to build tanky. On-hit makes a lot more sense. But then you look on... That has been built up so far for Viking. Getting that Luden's Companion for Conti. The Kraken Slayer for Shogun. Those are good items. Those are... Good spikes, but I feel like not enough. They need those two items desperately for both Syndra and Zaya for their team fight to feel like they'll bring more might. They'll bring enough to contend against Team Secret here. Especially because Eddie has already gotten that Ginsu's. Bit of a cheaper build here for uh, Varus compared to that of Zaya. Which will allow just that bit of an earlier spike. For Team Secret when it comes to their, their marksman. Oh, what? Hosmed fighting in the top lane against Kratos. All out. Flashed away, though. Can't stop Hosmed as he slams down the lamp post onto Kratos. But mid lane. Eddie's getting tagged. Trying to get out of there, but he is easily killed off. Kati making sure that he cannot escape. Well, almost getting Aris as well. One for one trade between the two teams. Top lane gone. ADC gone. 
means no advantages truly will be gathered by either squad. The Baron spawning up here in a few seconds. I love that animation, by the way. Very cool. Wait, what? Uh. Uh. I was so distracted. I gotta, I gotta rewind. I gotta see what happened here. Oh, he just gets caught over there and just popped. Okay. I was so caught off by the animation. I didn't even notice that Gurren Kati, 100-0 Chiang, who is invading and trying to steal some chicken nuggets again. Now it's a worthwhile play here for Viking Esports. That's a two for one in their favor. But unfortunately for them, with how they've changed Baron, it's not quite so easy to take this early into the game. Not unless you have certain champions on your side. Azir, there's a reason why we see a lot of Azir bans and picks. is way too good at taking that. Even seeing the likes of Varus on hit Varus is really good at that. Kalista, always going to be great at that. Wait, that is a deep TP from Hazmed. Yuri, flag and drags away. Gets that distance from Jax. Still hunting. And the TP from Kati too! So uh, special there to the turret. But both sides skirting danger. Well, not both sides. One side. Team, Team Secret not finding the plays there. On to Viking. Looking more like uh, ninjas on that one. Very well done from them. Means that Team Secret, who were setting up a play, hoping that they could get that pick and then turn themselves onto the Baron, like I said, with the on-hit Varus, does mean that you can actually burst down Baron pretty quickly. And then you have Jax on that, your side, too. So it would actually be an opportune time had the play worked out, but it didn't. So instead, they got to go here to mid lane, topple this tier one, but that's a TP from Kratos on the other side. The God of War wanting the battle spots Hazmed as well as Ars, but it's actually just a bait because he thought it was Eddie. Here comes the paranoia, shutting off the lights, but all out drags in Ars. But that is the duel you do not want to be fighting here if you're Kratos getting in the back line. Huge engage from Kyrie, but you got to be careful that hostile takeover. Take it over the fight. Flash in the knock up with the pop blossom. Ars will survive with the bailout. Gurry, the next one on the chopping block. Double kill for Hazmed. Team Secret coming out with a beautiful play. Gorgeous, gorgeous play there. That is a 4 for none trade, losing not a single player on their side. Aris bailed out by Taki. I said you had two functions there. As Renata, hostile takeover, bailout. What did Taki do? Hostile takeover, bailout. It wasn't on to Eddie. It wasn't on Chung like I thought it was going to be. But on to Aris, I'll take it because you had everyone live. Now all of you will wear the purple. You got to take a look at this replay. And it seems so dire there from Kratos at first. And it was honestly a really good read with the all out. Getting them baited in. Thought they had this play. Great engage from Kyrie. That hostile takeover getting them in this tight corridor and allowing that flash in from Aris. It was a perfect pop blossom. Technically, it actually hit four people because Guri cataclysmed in to the pop blossom. So he took the damage. He just didn't take the knockup. But, it, like, so it looked good at first from Viking. Kratos survived for a long time. Kyrie, beautiful, engaged with the grand entrance and quickness. But the problem is still going to be fighting in a tight corridor when a hostile takeover is there. But I Glasgow has been huge. But what a play there! A seems secret. They do trade back one for one. I like that from Viking. I said the Renata is a problem. Well, there goes that hostile takeover and bailout. But you don't have Guri anymore. Could be risky trying to engage a play. The bait worked once. That's why ours sent out the clone of Eddie. Got a little bit of vision. Kari spotted out, trying to clear away the control ward. But all the while, Osbed. Making sure these minions get chip damage onto the inhibitor turret in the bot lane. Cannon will do a lot here. And having that Titanic, usually, as I was trying to say long ago, the Trinity Force has kind of been the go-to first item for a lot of Jax builds. So seeing the Titanic first was what threw me off at first, but now that you have the 
Droid and Trinity Force. Woo! Hello, bye, Taki. You got back on the map, and guess what? Put right back in the dirt. Viking again. The problem was Taki, and it seems that Viking agreed with me. They don't like this Renata being on the map, saying you are an issue. If you have Bailout or Hostile Takeover, and Taki really doesn't want to use Bailout on themselves, because then your carries don't have that opportunity. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for Eddie, especially because you got to imagine if they notice Bailout has been used on a Taki, Viking are going to full in dive Eddie. They're going to say, everyone else does no not matter anymore. Here for Team Secret. Osmed, Jung, Aris, you can dive the back line all you want. There's a reason why we picked a Zaya and a Syndra. Zaya, great at disengaging herself, and then even Kati on Syndra, Scatter the Weak, will, even if it doesn't get the Spell Shield immune uh, Nocturne, it will deny the other members, creating enough distance, enough a delay, that they can burst down Eddie, then peel onto other, uh, other members here of Team Secret. The Viking, definitely not out of this game yet, but it is dire. Two picks onto the sport, pretty good. But what do, you, what do you get afterwards? That's good. That's the real question. And as we just saw, Viking didn't get much. They couldn't get much. They were still that Baron buff. And we were even seeing the TP into the bot lane. Hosmed scaring off Kratos. This Kazante could have actually probably fought against Aris. He can't fight against Hosmed. Hosmed realizing that as well. There's Leap Strike, Auto Attack. It might be chip damage to a Kazante. But with an another Tunneler item... Looking like on the docket there for Hosmed. This Jax is going to get even worse. Level 16 already. Oof. Man, look at that. That was pretty much one auto that took out most of those minions. It was just the cannon and a couple melees. Gonna do a lot of work here, especially once he gets to that third item. And I worry for Viking. How do you stop Hosmed? How do you stop this Jax? Because... Now you're getting to this issue. When you look at the fights here for, T uh, not Team Secret, for uh, Viking Esports. Yes, you can have a pick on Ataki. That's nice. You get rid of the hostile takeover and bail out early before anyone else answers. Cool. Hosmed, if that TP is up, should never be with the team. Which means that if you aren't dealing with Hosmed, you can't actually look for Taki. Because if you look for Taki, Hosmed's taking your base. But then, if you're focused on a Hosmed, you're not killing Hosmed unless you send four people there, which means the rest of Team Secret are going to go for the Baron when that spawns up in a minute's time, or they're going to look for the Cloud Soul. There are just so many things that are going right for Team Secret that I'm worried for Viking Esports in this game. But does not mean that they're out. Especially, ooh, had Kati not gotten spotted out by that Bursting Bloom. Maybe... Could have 100 to 0 Aris there. I did get spotted out. Now, because Gurry has. Oh, yep, there it is. I was right. Conti does 100 to 0 Aris. I knew that was going to happen. I just didn't think it would happen right then. Your three item Syndra with a Storm Surge. There's no Zonias on Aris' side. We just didn't get to see it on screen. So there we go. That That's a good start here for Viking. As the Baron spawns, that will deny a lot of that uh, power that I was talking about. The split push that they could have had. Of course, they wouldn't want to look for it now. And the pick almost on Eddie as he was able to flash away. But they burst down Kari. TP on the other side. They have Kratos. Scared away from the battle. Doesn't want to join just yet. Hosmed was walking his whole way there because he didn't have the TP up himself. But with the pick that they got onto Kari... That is the one engaged tool gone here for Viking. They have Ars back up. TP is there. Look at that deep TP behind Kratos. All the while, Gurry wants to get in the pit, but Hasmed 1v3 man moding this one, making sure that the Vikings themselves cannot battle back. They are chased away as Gurry does get a little bit of aggression onto Ars, does lock him into the pit, but he flashes out of there. Oh, no way! Gurry, the flash in, barely stealing away the Baron. I can't believe he did it. Keeping Vikings in this game. Wow. That was one health. One health. Gurry noticed that. 
The flag drag flashed in. Oh my god. Gurry, you might have just single-handedly saved this game. The soul will be picked up here by Team Secret. But Gurry... Brave Soldier, you are amazing. What a play there from the jungler of Viking Esports. That's what I love about the VCS right there. Plays like that. You don't really see people feel that confident to look for that kind of play. But Gurry saw it said, you know what? We're not going to win this fight. We will lose the game if we lose out on this Baron. And this all really started with this play. Akati got the solo bolo under Nico. Here we go. Look at this. One. It got, to, it got to one twice. It got to one twice and it almost reset. Oh my god. That is absolutely wild. And so now it is Viking sieging. Comeback gold on the table. Will take them some time to get rid of some of these minions though. They don't want to overcommit and overplay their hand. Not when they've wrestled back the game from 6,000 down here to 3,500. Of course, the soul is on the other side. Team Secret can move around the map a lot quicker than they can. But Vikings are okay with this. The Baron will get the much-needed comeback gold. Chain of Corruption's not landing on a Kratos. No engage. Team Secret realizing they have to forfeit that play. And what you play here now for Viking is you're playing for an Elder. You're playing for this Elder Dragon. Is that that Elder Dragon? That is going to happen. That will be a fight. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even with Hazmed here, three and a half, almost four item jacks. Level 18. We are having an Elder Dragon fight. There is just no way that is not happening. Team Secret. Oh, man. Oh, man. That has got to feel bad for them. They've been in control most of the game. A couple picks here and there have worked out for the, uh, for Viking. I kind of kept them afloat a little bit. It's like they're, they're getting the raft. They, ha they were in a raft. They were sinking. They had one bucket, though. And they were actually able to get a lot of that out. And get a lot, and some of the water out, but not, not enough to stop the boat from actually continuing to go out. And then they hit a sandbar, and they're like, wait, we can stand up. Okay, cool. We're not actually in danger anymore. We're no longer seeking because we can stand here in the water. The boat's not, not going anywhere. The team secret. We look at what they can do in this game and how their gold is allocated. That is a nice thing. A lot of their gold are into their carries that can continue to scale up in the game. Four items there for Eddie on the on-hit forest. We can burst through these tankier members. Then you have the three, almost four items for Hosmed. Hosmed was trying so hard. Yeah, he did it! I, I knew what you were trying to do. I knew what you were trying to do. Got the Titanic to cancel the back without actually engaging on a Kratos. I knew what you were, I knew what you were doing, Hosmed. I've done that play before. Always fun. Always fun. But I'm just looking at the state of the game, and I feel like neither team will do anything for that two, that two minutes. Maybe a pick, but you're not really seeing either team venture out alone. Goon squad for each side, five members strong for Team Secret mid lane. They have TP for Kratos on a uh, Viking, so they can easily have him show up on any play. They have plenty of wards. Easy wards for flanks or for defensive uh, positions. So no threat. It will be that two-minute mark. It will be at the Elder Dragon. And honestly, whatever team gets that, that could decide the game. Even with Team Secret leading in the gold the entirety of this game, it can come down to an Elder Flip. 
As look at the TP on the other side. That is beautiful from Aris. And with the lights turned out, nobody knew. They got one knock up, but up in the air, Shogun went and got the kill back. Bail out on Cheong. Not going to save him as Hosmed still fighting inside of the Cataclysm. While Kratos got the kill onto Eddie. And Taki, you cannot beat him. But the top laners, they're the ones carrying the game. Leap strike away. Hosmed took the turret shot to the face as Guri is hunting him down. But the movement speed will help out a lot here for Hosmed. Getting out of there. Another leap strike away. Three for two. That's a flag and drag, but Guri didn't want to continue to chase that. Not anymore. As Taki and Hosbed now grouping up together. That could have actually been turned right around on you. But Guri really wants this. He really wants to deny Hosbed getting that back. And he's by himself. Nobody else chased. And with Taki hiding out in that brush, that could have actually gotten dicey really quickly. But once Kati showed face, that is when Team Secret knew to bail out of the fight themselves. They didn't have to continue the play. It was just the chase there from Guri denying the bank as long as possible, which gives a lot of time for the members of Viking Esports to respawn on the map, especially Shogun. Daya will be back. No flash or cleanse, though. Featherstorm will be off of cooldown by the time they have the fight here at that Elder Dragon, but the Baron spawning too. Oh, what one do you want to go for? For either team. But we're going to have a replay at a start. It's a split-up fight. Look at Shogun kiting back. I really like that flash, but unfortunately just steps up a little bit too far. And Hosmed reads that perfectly. Says, all right, you are the target. I'm not going to kill Guri. I can only kill Kati and I can kill Shogun really quickly. Guri will take a lot more time. Okay, but we're back to live. And we see the Elder Flip. The Burger Flip here. Who's got the superior flat, uh, spatula? We're, if we're going with SpongeBob memes here, you got to have, what is that? The... The bigger flipper, 10,000 or 9,000 that SpongeBob got. Because right now, that is a nice scatter of the week out of Kati. But Kati had to go golden, and they landed Chain of Corruptions on to Guri so they can get the lockdown onto Kati. And Kati's gone. Jung kicking up the kill. They're cutting it back still as Hosman locked in the pit. Cannot get on a Shogun that time around. And all the while, Eddie was dealing with Kratos, the god of war himself, making sure the war is at least slightly even. Only one dead on either side. But they got the bait, looking for the Mimic. The Mimic from ours, spotting out the bait that was there from Viking while they wait for Kratos, still having that TP. Ours still looking for the angle. Baron has spawned up. TP's on either side. Kratos is in the bot lane with the team, but Hosmed has his own flank. It is going to be down to this Baron. Kyrie not spotting out Hosmed, going for the long angle. 50% onto it. Who's going to get it? Hosmed looking for the dive. Decides to go on a Shogun, who's up in the air with a huge pull back with the feathers. Hosmed jumping away, but pushed into the wall. So close are dead members. They've got Kratos low. The pick one is into the stasis, and then they look for Kratos, barely alive. How is nobody dead? Finally, knocked. You're going to be the first casualty. Traded back with a double kill onto Eddie as Guri keeping him in this game. Shogun still living too. How the hell are you alive for so long? Finally, the Pop Blossom helped pick up the kill with a TP coming in. Kati has returned from death to join the battle again as Elder Dragon had not been taken. Guri will get the Elder Dragon. Wait. Oh, Eris, I thought you were going back in there for a second. Viking Esports. Six members strong with Kati having died once and getting back into the fight. Will claim the Elder. <sighs> what a battle there. And never mind. I thought whoever got the Elder, that was going to decide the game. Nope. This game is going to go longer. It is not over just yet. And look at that damage Shogun did. Shogun. Oh, living up to that name. Because you were in control of that battle. Almost double the damage that Eddie did. But Team Secret. Oh, ho, ho. Team Secret. They're saying, all right, you get the Elder. We will go for the Baron. Eddie, still a long distance away. Guri is in the pit. And Guri has stolen it once. Down almost to 50. Eddie on the other side, spotted out by the control ward. Now realizing that Guri is in an angle to get inside the pit. Ars was not able to get that angle himself to find the flank on Nico. So they peel back Team Secret. Not confident anymore of the play, especially because Elder is still on two of the members of Viking. As Hosmed has to use the Counter-Strike just to make sure that Kratos did not want to die back. But back and forth. This is really a tug of war between the two teams. Neither wanting to relent. As what has it been? The past five minutes has been nothing 
but a struggle for either squad, and they set up the bait there. Gurry was spotted out. Sees Hazmed, doesn't realize that Aris has his own flank angle. Kratos spotting his head out, but then his Viking maybe trying to bait in the Baron. They've sent out Shogun, and he is attacking the Baron. Jiang has to know. They haven't even used the blue trinket yet. It's down to 50%. They got to get inside the pit eventually. Elder getting a little bit of damage there onto Hazmed. But look at ours. That is the angle you need. Down to 25. Get inside the pit. When are you going to go? Jiang, you're the one who stole it this time around. Team Secret finding the play. The Secret Agent gets the steal as it is a one for one. But claiming themselves the Baron. Team Secret do not go out yet. Look like Viking had the plays after getting the elder the steal before from Guri to keep the game in uh, keep, keep uh viking esports in the game but then it's Cheong stealing away baron as well two steals in one game we still got quite some distance to go but i doubt we'll have another oh it's two three minutes and 30 until okay let's look at this they put over the ward, and because the lights are turned on, oh, Chiang, Chiang, what a steal there. I believe it was a second too early. Yeah, it was a second too early out of Guri. Panic on that one. So close. I think last time it was Chiang who panicked. This time it was Guri. So Baron on Team Secret side. They will not... Meet Valhalla just yet. The Vikings have yet to claim the victory. Almost dragging this game back. The game... I'm really... I, I don't know who's going to take this, honestly. It says 4,000 gold lead with the soul still for Team Secret. But at this point in this game... I can't tell you. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that we'd have two steals... Each team getting their own steal on Baron. And then there's two minutes until another Elder Dragon will spawn. We potentially could have a second Elder fight. Hosmed escorting these minions into the base. We'll get some chip damage on it to the turret. But not going to take it. Sorry. Got to be careful. Tangle Barbs did connect. But with the turret gone in the mid lane. Minions doing their work here for Team Secret. Opening up the base slightly. Giving them an angle. Getting that inhibitor could mean that when two minutes comes up, that Elder Dragon is a lot easier, but there's a lot of vision down there by that dragon. I don't know how much of it's going to time out by the time the dragon spawns, but there are ways that Viking, if they can keep this game afloat a little bit longer, they have decent wave clear. When you look at Kati, especially as I'm thinking that is a fully stacked up Cinder Buck, a Cinder Buck, a Scrooge McDuck, Cinder Duck, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't even know where I was going with all that. But Kati is going to have a lot of damage. A lot of true damage that no one's going to be able to eat. But because Kati was shown in the top lane trying to clear out the wave against Hazmed, making sure this Jax can't open up another lane, it meant it was a free time onto that inhibitor here for Team Secret. Getting a lot of damage onto the inhibitor mid lane. While Hazmed is getting chased away by Kati. Tangle Barb's only connecting on to Guri. Looking for the engage out of Chiang. Do get Kyrie And the hostile takeover turning out the lights as well. Do they want to go for the play, though? They got a lot of damage. They take out Rakan. Engage is gone. But Chiang is going to be traded. One for one. The support for the jungler. Hazmed leaps striking away. The flash from Guri to survive. The flash from Shogun. Barely. He survives. Or does he bail out? It is the help of the Guardian's Angel that keeps Shogun alive with the scatter of the week onto Eddie. Trying to fight back with the knife in from Hazmed. Flashing for Kati. Counter Strike doesn't need to connect because they got errors with the pop. Blossom. And Team Secret didn't even need to wait for the Elder. They found the play. Found the picks found the fights and even if Kratos will go down in a blaze of glory and war he's got nothing left with the team gone he's only a tank against Hosman or what no way Kratos okay I never mind I guess I don't know League of Legends because Jax just lost to Kazante Kratos all right very well done very well done I thought you were dead I thought a fully built level 18 Jax certainly cannot lose to Cassante. You proved me wrong. You proved me wrong. Which means Elder will be on the table. 
And that 4,000 gold, we are at the point in the game where gold does not matter. More important will be summoner spells, which, if we look really quickly, uh, pretty much gone from everyone. Flash will be up for Chiang. Flash is up for Kyrie. Two TPs for Viking. A good play for this Elder. And there it is, one TP. Where are the other members? Hazmed, about to have the TP up. Can TP it to that control ward inside the pit. But look at the base. Look at Conti, still not there. Cl catching the wave. 50% on to Elder. Jung, can you do it twice? Turning out the lights. That's a TP behind. Looking for the steal, but not this time around. You're the one with the lights turned off on you, except for the flash away, keeping you alive. Eris spotting him out. That is going to be a chain of corruption onto Kratos with a flash in. Eris getting the knockup onto one, but all the while, Eddie's getting chased down by Kratos. He'll have to get his Guardian's Angel to keep him alive, and all the while, he will still fall. But wait a minute. The base. The base. What was happening inside the 